Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about timer counters. What can you do with timer counters in your Arduino Uno? Well, probably the simplest thing you could do would be to create a simple time delay. In other words, make your own version of the delay function. A bit more useful than that, we can create variable duty cycle pulse waveforms. In other words, we can create pulse width modulation at certain output pins. And finally, we can trigger interrupts. In other words, we can create internal interrupts using these. Uh, we're going to talk about this, this idea of triggering interrupts, in a separate video in the uh, interrupts video sequence. Let's take a look at the hardware. So the Uno has two 8-bit and one 16-bit counter. So here's a uh, block diagram of an 8-bit counter. So we have two of these. And um, the, probably the most important thing is this guy right here. This is the actual content of the timer counter register, the main register. And basically what a counter does is um, it's, it's a simple counter, digital counter circuit that um, will start at zero, count up, one, two, three, four, and up to a top value. For an 8-bit counter, that would be 255. So that's what it does. It just goes from zero up to 255. And typically it would then just roll over, right? And you'd get a carry out and it would go back to zero and keep doing this. Um, there are other modes you can do. You can have it sort of preemptively stop early. You could get it to count up to a certain value, like maybe, you know, 160 or something, and then fold back. Or you could get it to count up and count down. Um, we have control logic that helps with some of that. But that's the basic idea, okay? And um, to control some of this, we have down here the two timer counter control registers that set up these various operation modes. And equally important, we have these output compare registers. So there's two halves, two parts. So there's three timers, but there's actually sort of six uh, outputs, if you will, that you can generate. So these output compare registers, typically what you would do is when you get a match, in other words, um, let's say this uh, OCR right here was uh, the value like 110. When this counter gets up to 110, you have a match and that can do something. So it could generate an interrupt or it could go out to this waveform generation circuit, which is hooked to a physical pin. So OCNA, OCNB are physical pins that are multiplexed with your output ports. Okay, so you have to program these to get what you want, but um, nonetheless, this is essentially how it's going to be uh, generated, right? How it's, how it's going to be used. Another important part of this is something called a prescaler, because the uh, speed with which this thing is going to count depends on the system clock. Well, that's 16 megahertz on an UNO. And if you count that up, in other words, if you go from 0 to 255, you do 256 counts, at a clock speed of 16 megahertz, you discover that times out pretty quick. In other words, um, on the order of 16 microseconds is a full count. Well, what if you want to count things out um, at hundreds of microseconds or milliseconds? What do you do with that? Essentially, what we're going to do is this prescaler is essentially going to divide down the clock so it'll come out slower. All right, so let's take a closer look at this waveform generation block. So two things we've uh, already seen, data direction register and the output port register. So the data direction register, of course, connects up to this little tri-state, and here's your physical pin again. So in the uh, earlier work that we uh, did, looking at the output, the digital logic output here, we just showed the port kind of coming out here through this uh, tri-state. In fact, it's multiplexed with the waveform generator. So we have some other uh, pin values over here that set the function for the waveform generator, but basically this is just creating pulses for us, uh, various uh, duty cycle square wave, you know, rectangular pulses and this gets clocked through. So if this is uh, set, then we're going to, going to get the output of the waveform generator rather than the output of the 
uh, normal, you know, digital port that we would expect to use, you know, with like digital uh, write, something like that. All right. But notice, if you want to use the waveform generator, you still have to set up the data direction register for output mode. Otherwise, the try state is not going to be enabled. All right. So you want to use this pin for that. That's what you're going to got to do. But of course, you don't have to do that because the, uh, the timer, the circuitry back here, right, could be used for a sort of a non-physical waveform. In other words, it could just be used to trigger these interrupts, internal interrupts. So I don't want to do this. Right? All depends on what our application is. Okay, so these uh, pins out here are mapped to the, the physical pins accordingly. So we have, like I said, three timers, 0, 1, 2, and there's two halves to them because they have the, the two different output compare registers, A and B. So we can see there's six of these and they are mapped to various ports and bits, right? So we're going to, in some subsequent code, look at timer number two uh, because it's sort of the sort of the, the, the most free, if you will. These other ones, zero and one, are used for other system purposes. So these are the safest ones to play with. We'll look at that. So you can see one of these is on port B, the other one's on port D. They're both at bit number three, right? But that's Arduino pins three and 11. And these correspond, of course, to the analog output. In other words, if you're going to use the analog write function that creates uh, the, the pulse width modulation, these are the pins that are being used. All right, so the two big registers to control this are the timer uh, counter control register 2, A, and B, right? So this is for the, uh, for the uh, timer counter number 2 that I mentioned, and there's a series of bits in here. So we have um, the COM bits. Notice that there's a, a pair for each half, right, the A and B halves. And then there's these waveform generation bits that describe how this thing is going to be um, uh, sort of creating the output waveform. There's different functions, different ways to do this. And one really important thing I want to point out here is the fact that these three bits are split across two registers. Uh, I'm not really sure why they did it this way. I'm sure there's a good reason, but um, this is sort of a gotcha. You could forget that you actually have to manipulate two different registers, two different control registers, uh, in order to set the waveform generation mode, right? These WGM, waveform generation mode bits. The three bits down here, CS, these are the clock prescale bits that I had mentioned previously. And um, I'll just scroll down here so you can see what this is. So I have these three bits, and depending on how we set them, we get different prescales. We get different divide downs. If it's all zeros, right, this is stopped. If it's 001, there's no prescale. In other words, we use the basic system clock at 16 megahertz. And depending on the other patterns, you can see that we get other divide downs, right? So if I set it to all ones, if I set it to hex seven, we divide down by a factor of 1024. So we can really slow this thing down. So instead of 16 microseconds for a count of 0 to 255, which would be the no prescale, right? Just divide by one, basically. You can crank this all the way down by a factor of a, basically 1,000. So it'll be about 16 milliseconds to get a 0 to 255 count. And there are techniques you can use to sort of stretch this even further, but um, for most purposes, that would uh, work out pretty well. Okay, so these various waveform modes, and there are a lot of them. All right, so if we set the waveform generation mode bits all to zero, we get normal mode. So typically normal mode means you're going to count from zero to 255. It's going to overflow. In other words, go back to zero and just keep doing this. Zero to 255, zero to 255, zero to 255. That's it. All right, then we have a bunch of... of um, uh, pulse width modulation modes that we can choose. So different kinds of, of ways of doing that. There's a phase correct version and a fast version. Um, the subtleties of these I'm not going to get into right here. I just want to look at some basic ideas today. CTC mode is clear timer on compare. This can be uh, useful. We, I discussed this under interrupts. Not today. Okay, so as I said, the COM bits uh, describe how the output pin works. So, you know, do I want to do things like uh, uh, toggle it? Do I want to clear it? Do I want to set it? You know, is it disconnected, right? Kind of an obvious sort of thing. 
So we have to set those bits. And again, there's two of them, each for the A side and the B side. But these bits actually depend, you know, what they are depends on what the mode is. So depending on how we've set the mode, these com bits have different meanings. So there's quite a bit of variation here. This is very flexible. You can do lots of stuff with it. So let's take a look at a simple example. All right, so my first example is just creating sort of our own version of the delay function. And this uses the, uh, the simplest mode of operation. Again, we're going to count from 0 to 255. All right, when, when we count up, what's going to end up happening, we're going to get this uh, overflow flag bit is going to be set. Okay, and uh, we can just essentially wait on that. Now, this is an important point. There's no access restrictions on the uh, timer counter address, right? This is the actual thing where if you look at it, you could see it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So you can write this. You can write to this. In other words, sort of preload values or interrupt it and do things like this um, at will. There's no access uh, restriction on it, right? So I'm just going to create a little code here that blinks an LED. So I've got a little LED over here. Count offset is here just to show you how, how we can sort of preload that timer counter register. So in the setup, we come in and um, set the values for the timer counter uh, control registers. So I've got normal mode. I've got um, 1024 prescale, right? Then we come into our delay function. So this is our version of the delay function. We preload it with this count offset value, right, 15. So it's going to count from 15 up to 255. Then it overflows. So essentially, we're just going to wait on this overflow bit, all right? So we sort of preload this thing, right? We clear the flag, so get this thing ready to go. Now sit out here and just wait. So while not bit set, just sit and wait. Eventually, when it overflows, boom, the while loop is done, and we just decrement this x value, right? So this is like specifying, you know, units of time. And delay, this would, we would set this up using the, the actual delay function, so that it would be like one millisecond. So it's just our version of it. It's sort of a cheesy version of it. So we use it the same way, right? I'm just going to uh, flip this LED back and forth by changing the, uh, the value out of this port B. I just call my delay with 120 or my delay with 30. Right, so it's just counting down in the first case from 120, it's going to count down in the second from 30, right? So kind of a simple way of doing it, right? Just to show you how you can get in here and you could, if you wanted to, you could sort of uh, change this count offset value. You could make this a variable and uh, have your own sort of variable version of, of my delay, if you will. All right, something a little bit more useful rather than just showing you how it works. So we're going to show you how to, how to do... Uh, uh, fast pulse width modulation. So we're going to use an output pin on this thing. All right. So again, I'm going to use a uh, timer counter two, right? Remember zero, one, two, because this is the one that's a little bit more free and it's, it's easier to play with. So this is an eight bit counter. All righty. So first, remember we have to enable the output drivers. So the, the two pins I'm interested in were mapped out to ports B and D. All right, so I'm going to go back here just as a reminder. Zwink. There you go. All right, so there's port B, port D, bit 3. All right, so off of pins 11 and 3. Come back down here. All right, so there's our hex 8, right? Bit 0, 1, 2, 3, hex 8. So we've got those. So the output drivers are now active, if you will. Then we come in for the uh, timer counter uh, control registers, set these up. So, you know, we could look up these various bits here to get this uh, fast PCM mode. And then I'm going to use a prescale of 64. All right, so the uh, 64 so there we go. That's zero, zero, one. So I push up CS22, right, to get that. So what that's going to do, the 16 um, megahertz clock, right, so again, it's uh, 
basically one over 16 megahertz as a period times 256 gives you one full count and then we're going to um, divide that down by a factor of 64 in other words lengthen it by a factor of 64 so that's going to give us uh, one full count and about a millisecond all right just a little over a millisecond to get us one full count so that gives us basically the base frequency that we're going to be running at which would obviously be one over 1.024 milliseconds it's going to give you a little less than a kilohertz you know 970 some odd hertz as your base frequency okay now what's going to end up happening because of the way we've set this up the output control uh, excuse me output compare registers um, when we get a match on those right so this tcnt register is going up zero to 255 when it matches these then the output is going to flip all right so we're in other words a logical a toggle okay so one of them we've set at 128 and because we're going from 0 to 256 excuse me 0 to 255 for 256 total counts um, this gives us about a 50 percent duty cycle and then down here the other the other half of it the b half i set that uh, set this to 100 and that works out to about 39 percent for a duty cycle right high low high low high low notice there's nothing to do in the loop all right so whatever else we need to do whatever what else we want to do we put in here in other words this is going to just create this waveform on its own you know we start this up and it just goes so what we can do um, if you wanted to by the way on the fly you could change these you know you could change the values of these registers and uh you know have sort of a dynamic pulse width modulation if you were so inclined um so we we go out and we uh grab a, an oscilloscope and hook it up to the two output pins you know the the, the um uh port uh, b and d and what do we get well we get something like this so you can see the two outputs right the red and the blue outputs here uh, base frequency is sitting in as we said you know just under uh one kilohertz 978 hertz over here and the duty cycle for the red about 50 percent duty cycle for the blue about 39 percent right as indicated up here so like i said we could monkey with these numbers and change those duty cycles All right so again this runs by itself you don't you don't have to do anything once you set it up beautiful okay so finally the timer counter can be used to trigger interrupts internal interrupts that's the other really really big thing we do with these to create um you know convenient sort of timings for things i'm going to talk about that in separate video it's covered in the uh, lab manual and in the text and i think we're going to leave it right there